Great. Well, it looks like I am live streaming. So um, this is a test. Um, I did an earlier version of this uh, and forgot to send items actually to the live stream. So it was just my talking head, which uh, defeated the whole purpose of doing this. So I'm redoing this. And today what I'm going to show you is how I made a very simple brush holder for my travel brushes. So I, so I could take it into the field with me at the Minnesota State Fair this year and have it on the same platform level uh, with my water because I like to sketch and stand at the same time and you can't be reaching down for water which somebody's gonna knock over or whatever. So how can I bring everything up onto a platform level that I could then work off of? And what I ended up doing was creating, and this time I'm remembering it to send it, um, is, uh, uh, here's an image of me at the fair working. And you can see uh, the brush holder is in the top uh, right of the board that I'm working on. And next to it is a small metal container for water. And then you see my palette. And all of this is on a platform which is made of foam core, or not foam core, uh, um, plastic corrugated board. And uh, it was hinged so that I could fold the whole thing up and put it in a pocket that I have on my fanny pack. And this enabled me, as you can see, to use real brushes with water on the same level as that that I'm working on and not have to reach for anything. And all of this was attached to a monopod. Now this is a prototype and based on the three days that I used it, I was at the fair for three days, nine hours each day and sketching all of that time. And I uh, have sort of worked out what I like about this, what I don't like about this. And so we're going to be making a, a sturdier version and I'll write about that on my blog. But what I want to talk about right now is how I made this simple uh, stand for my brushes. And here is the closer view of that. So you can see it is an elastic holder, which has place for each one of the brushes that I'm taking. And you can see that there's a flap on the front end and the back end, which is hidden. And those flaps have Velcro on the back side of them, and that's what holds it to the board. So this is what I'm going to explain to you right now. I started first by getting a piece of card and I just hard and I just half painted watercolor paper. So I used that. And I folded it the way I wanted my piece to be. I knew I wanted a flap at the front end and the back end to hold it to the board. I also knew that when it was compressed together and attached to the board, I wanted it to lean over slightly to my right so that I could easily access the brushes. And I wanted the tips of the brushes to extend past this so I could just sort of grab on a part of the handle and have a real firm, secure uh, grab of them or grasp of them. So what I did is I cut a piece of regular lightweight cotton that I just happened to have. I don't have any more in that color, but it was just like this, very normal cotton. And I cut it to the size of my template. And then I took a piece, oh, well, and then I ironed it totally flat so there were no creases in it. And then I took a piece of three quarter inch wide, really high quality elastic. It's braided and, and it will last for a long time. And I pinned that across the strip. So my fabric was actually as big as this piece of card. And I trimmed it so that it would go across, or I, I, I put it so that it would go across here, I just pinned it. And then I attached it by sewing it on the end. And then I came in further and made another sewing line where I wanted my first brush to go. I inserted my first brush there and eyeballed how much space I needed for that brush. I removed the brush and sewed at the line that I'd eyeballed. 
Now you could use chalk or something else to mark these. Um, I just wanted to go one at a time so that I was getting the ease and the elastic that I wanted. Okay, and then I just worked my way along, putting a brush down, eyeballing where the line would go, sewing the line, and so on. Now, when that was done, I had a piece of flat fabric that looked just like this, only it was larger, okay? It hadn't been trimmed down yet. And the brushes weren't in place. I then took some of this, which is Pellon Peltex 72F double-sided fusible ultra firm stabilizer. And I cut my four panels out of this. The four, four panels, remember, were the front flap, the back flap, and the two center panels. Once I'd done that, I attached them to the back of my fabric. Well, I actually just positioned them there. I hadn't attached them yet. Allowing 1 16th of an inch for the hinging every place that there was a hinge. Then following the instructions for the product, I took a hot iron and just tacked the fabric to the stabilizer in all four places. I flipped it over, added a second sheet of fabric that was cut to the same oversized uh, dimension and tacked that in the four places. Once I'd done that, I flipped it back over again following the instructions and with a hot iron, pretend my hand is an iron, I held it for 10 seconds pressing and, and rubbing, moving it over, slightly overlapping, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, all the way across, really getting good adherence. Then I flipped it over and did the same thing on the back sheet of fabric, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and so on. I then had to trim the edges with one of those rolling cutters. And I also used one of those see-through rulers where it's very, cl very clear to see when you're making a 90 degree angle. And so I trimmed it down to the size that I wanted. I cut off some of the edge here for area that I, I didn't need. And then I have a little extra and space for one more brush over here. Once I trimmed it, I took this sandwich of fabric, stiffener, and back fabric over to the sewing machine again, and I sewed a satin stitch all the way around the edges. I just wanted to guard against fraying because it was going to get heavily used. When that was done, I took some Velcro that is self-adhesive on uh, both sides, and I attached it both to this holder and to the board where it was going to be placed. Now I thought I could get away with self-adhesive Velcro, but as you can see, there's some staining here. And this is because when this was in position on my board, and we'll just go over to that and look at that for a moment. When it was in position on my board, as you can see, and the image is going to come up on your screen in a moment. The, it's not coming up for some reason. Oh, there it comes. Okay. Uh, what, in that area, the front of that side, where you see the staining and the, the, the finished one that, that I've used, this is before it was used at all. That's where I put my rag for cleaning my brush. In fact, you can see one of the paper towels just sticking out from outside of the palette. And during work, it would move around and would get onto that edge of the holder. And it soaked through and caused the Velcro at the other side to delaminate. And then that caused it to come off. So, so I'm, I'm, not not I'm not concerned about, concerned about the, the um, uh, staining. And I'm not concerned that I lost that piece of Velcro. But I would suggest that if you're going to use Velcro, 
that you use some that you can tack down uh, with a couple stitches so it'll stay in place. Alternately, you can think about using clips like this that will hold it to the edge of the board that you have it on. And you could also have a clip at the back on this thing holding it in place. That would be probably the safest thing. The thing that you want to do ideally in this kind of situation is you want to keep these things secure so that if somebody bumps you, they don't all fall down on the ground. And because you're in a barn and there's all sorts of waste from the animals all over the floor. You don't want your stuff rolling around in that. So you want to keep this whole thing from falling down, hence the Velcro and also the clip. If you do clip it and everything on my top, my sort of tabletop, was clipped, I suggest that you put a leash. I used wax linen thread to leash all of my clips so that if they came undone because somebody bumped me, they would just dangle on the end of a short string and they wouldn't fall in any of the muck that was in the barn. Okay. Now, supposedly when we get the final version built of this top that we're making, now that I've used the prototype for three days and, and found the things I like about it, um, there's going to be some way to permanently or semi-permanently attach, but solidly attach all these items on my tabletop. So I'll, I'll wait and see what, um, what Dick works out in the plans for that. And I will post about both the prototype and the final version on my blog, Roz Wound Up, and uh, you can see that probably sometime still in September, although uh, because of our schedules, the final won't be built in September, but um, I'll, I'll talk about the prototype, okay? So that's very simply, that's how I did that. When, when it wasn't in use, it was uh, taken out and just folded like this and slipped right into my pack. This protected the, uh, the brushes. You could make this a different length if you wanted it actually to cover your tips of your brush whatever works for you. And um, you'd have to have an allowance for that on your board, uh, width for that. But um, um, there was very little space on the board. We were trying to keep things to a minimum, but that's something that you can do. Or you could have another piece that you make that would Velcro down here to these four pieces and cover all of this. And then you'd have a nice little case. I just thought of that. So that might be a nice way to do it always thinking. Um, I hope that this gives you some ideas about how you can take your travel brush into uh, the, the world. And I just <laughs> sent that to life. So now you can see me again, maybe to wrap up. Again, thanks for watching. I'm sorry that I'm just sort of getting used to this. Um, and it's uh, a lot for me to remember to send things and so on. But I think I did better this time than the previous time. And again, I hope you'll try these kinds of travel, travel brushes and make a holder for them. One of the nice things about having these kinds of travel brushes that just have the shorter handles is you aren't uh, popping and snapping and screwing in however they work because every brand works different with those uh, travel brushes that have the caps on them. So there's extra things to hold on to to drop in the muck. And so you've minimized that. The other thing is when you're working with a capless travel brush, the, the stocks are shorter, or the barrels, and so you have less bulk to travel and carry around, so it'll fit in more small packs. And then the other thing is the brushes themselves are often, um, depending on the manufacturer, full size. So this is a real half inch flat. And if you use a Niji water brush, which has a flat, it's slightly smaller than this. If you use some other brands that have flats, they're very much smaller than this, if you can even find a flat. So having a flat or a filbert that's an actual size um, uh, is, is really fun for when you're sketching out and you know, using water. And it's, you don't have to transition to how do I use the water brush when you're used to using real brushes, okay? So I hope you give it a try. Um, and, um, and have some fun and thanks for watching this. And I hope that I'll do more live stream stuff in the future, work out how to announce when they're going to be so that you can see, uh, and comment as they're live. And then also, um, I hope I'll get better about switching things back and forth, but thanks for your patience and have a great day sketching.